Hey guys, welcome here. In this lecture, I'll be explaining how web applications work. I need to warn you before the lecture that this lecture will be a little bit longer. I will spend here for sure more than 20 minutes. You are not required to code here anything. You can just sit comfortably and watch. All right, so let's start. Here is our applications we have been working on in the previous lectures. We'll be just explaining the basics of Next.js. And now let's explain the bigger picture. Okay, so have you ever wondered how are you getting the content to your browser from the internet? So basically what you are doing, you're opening your browser, right? You're opening here some tab and you will place here a URL of the website you would like to visit. So let's say you would like to go to Udemy website or maybe to medium.com. Before we'll enter the website, I will show you one thing. Let's right click here into your browser and let's click here inspect. All right, when you click on the inspect, we'll have here more details about the web page you are currently previewing. We don't show you here anything yet. Uh, but before I will go to some website, please click here on network. You can see here all of the network communications your browser is making. So let's make this request. Let's go, let's say to udemy.com. All right, so let's go to udemy.com or let's go to some of my, web my website, okay? <laughs> so let's go to einco.com. Okay, so I will go to Incode or academy.incode.com and you will see as soon as I will make a request, so as soon as I will enter the URL, you will see there is a lot of things that's happening, all right? So usually the first thing that you will see here will be that you are asking to go get to the request so URL you have entered here. So this will be the request. I will click here so you can see the more details about it. This first request I'm not clicking here on because it is just the re redirect request. We are interested in the second one in this case. You can see there's a request to HTTPS academy.enco.com. So that's the URL I have entered here. All right, and then as I make the request, the request went the wire on the internet and it reached the server academy.einco.com and academy.einco.com responded with some response and the response you can see in this tab here you can see the response you can click on this and you will see the response was a html document now i can see the huge html document okay that the your browser which is a, also an application parsed down and ran there on your on your screens Okay, so all of these HTML tags here, you can see here, was, was rendered, at first it, they were parsed, the document object model was created, the representation of the document you are received here and was rendered out to your browser. So you can see here this representation of the page. Okay, you can see here also other requests because this HTML document you have asked from a server contains also the some other links that you should fetch from the internet maybe you have some images here so you can see also images that were fetched or maybe some css files they are included in this main html document so you need to do additional requests to fetch also the other other things that are referenced in your html document but the main point is here you are making the request to the server server is just the application on some remote computer and this is sending you response in this case html document Okay, this HTML document is taken here to the browser. Browser is parsing it down and rendering on your screens here so you can interact with the, with the page. Okay, I was mentioning before is creating something called document object model in the shortcut the DOM. You can see here actual document object model. When you click here document, document, and you can see here the representation of your document okay so you can see here also all the, all of the objects so i can write here document document dot children and i should see here all of the children of html document which was parsed down and they will, there was an object representation created of each of your each of your element okay but that's not really important the point here i wanted to show is that we are making requests and we are getting HTML document. All right, in this lecture, I was wanted to particularly talk about how all this is rendered and what's the difference between a server-side render applications and a client-side render applications. So in our case, we are working with the Next.js framework and Next.js framework is server-side rendered. All right, that's the, the best benefit of the Next.js is that's rendering the content on the server. 
What I mean by that, first, I would like to show you what's a, what is a client-side render application. So client-side render application from the name you can already see here, you can hear that the content of your, of your page is rendered on your browsers. So basically what you're getting, as I showed you here, the HTML document to your browser, in the case of a client-side render application, for example, as the React here is the example of the React application, you are getting empty HTML document. I can show it to you. Then you would like to see here what you are getting. Okay, okay. you can, uh, as I showed you before, you can click right-click inspect, you can refresh the page and you will see the network request here, so it will refresh. Okay, in this case, I should be getting only one document. Uh, let's wait a second because it's going from a Heroku, so it's taking a little bit longer to get the application here. You can see here we're getting this document, this HTML representation. But in this case, you will see when I will Actually, I will parse it down. I will format it for you so you can see it more clearly. Or actually, I can quickly right click and view page source. So that's the document you are getting from the server. Let's copy it. And let's open here some HTML formatter so we can format it nicely. So, HTML formatter. Let's say, see here, free online HTML formatter. Let's paste it here and format HTML in a new window. Okay, so that's what you are getting from from the server in a case of a client side render, uh, rendered application. You can see here in my React.js application, I'm getting all of this content here, but all this content is not present in the HTML document you are getting from the server. Okay, so if I want to search here from key resources text here, it's not here. So how it's possible that a client said render application displaying all of this content? Important thing here to understand that your HTML document can also include some JavaScript code, or it can include the link to the JavaScript file that should be executed in your browser. For example, you can see here that my HTML document is referencing two JavaScript files, this chunk.js and this other chunk, main.chunk.js, and they are responsible for rendering all of this content on the screen, and that's why it's called client side rendered application, because you are getting empty HTML document as soon as HTML document is parsed down. Additional resources are fetched, in this case, JavaScript files. JavaScript files are executed in your browser, and they are rendering this content on the screen. Okay, I can show you the content of these JavaScript files, for example, in this main. Uh, .js, here we should have here this text uh, key resources. So I will search for this. I will con control F here to search for the text. And you can see here key resources. It's indeed here. So this JavaScript code is responsible for rendering this key resources on the screen. Okay, so one more time from the server, getting empty HTML document, additional resources are fetched, JavaScript files, and the JavaScript is this core. React application that is responsible for rendering this content on the on the screen. Okay, so React.js, Angular, Vue.js, all of these frameworks are used for creating client-side rendered application. What's the benefit of such application is that it's very fast to get the initial initial page loaded. Okay, because you are getting the all of this HTML which is empty, so you can you are getting immediately something on the screen, and the JavaScript is responsible to render it. So it's happening. It's happening very fast. All right, so that's a client side rendered application. Now let's take a look on the server side rendered application. So in this case, application we are working on. All right, so when I will inspect the source here, so I will right click here in a view page source you will see that we will have here more things. When I will search here, for example, this current value text here, the current value will be here, you can see. So in the server side rendered application, we are getting the, all of the content rendered on the server when we are making a request, and back we are getting this HTML document that already contains all of this, all of this stuff we want to display to the user. Okay, so that's a server side rendered application. Server side rendered applications have a bit better results in SEO, so search engine optimization. So that's the th basically think how visible is your page on the internet. More content you have on your page at the time you are making the request, the better your page can uh, perform. All right, so 
that's basically the best benefit of server-side application that the content is available immediately as you are making the request. And also this Next.js framework has a benefit that you can still use React.js because the Next.js is built on top of the React.js, so it's using a React.js. All right, so I think in our theory, and now let's start with some practical examples. All right, so first I would like to show you the example how everything is interacting together. So you can, you can see it from more detail from inside of the code. I was telling you that as soon as your JavaScript files are loaded into the browser, they are executed. So I'll write some JavaScript that will be responsible for rendering the content on the screen. Okay, so I'll go back, I will go to my coding editor. I'll just prepare here some code I can uh, execute in the browser, okay? So I will, it, will, it will be not part of my component here. So I'll just write here basic JavaScript code, okay? So that's nothing related to the React uh, framework or to the next JS, to the React library or to the next JS framework. This is just normal JavaScript code. Okay, so I'll write here const node. I will create here a variable called node. I will access here document, which is uh, which is accessible accessible in the browser. I showed you document object before, and on a document I can call a function. So I will call here function create element, and let's say I would like to create some header element, so h1. Okay, this will create a variable node. All right, and if I would like to add some text into no node because this will be just an empty h1 element, I will access my node, or actually first I will create a text text and I will create here, I will access here document again and the new the other function called create text node create text node and I will create here some text so let's so let's say hello world all right this will create a text I will append this text into the node so I will write here node dot append child and I will append here this text all right and then I will simply get here document get element by ID. So I'll get some uh, some reference of uh, some element in the HTML. For example, we I will go back here. We will search here some ID we can use. So I'll search here, for example, on the body we have here this div with the ID underscore underscore next. Okay, so I will get a reference to this element. So I will access here document get element by ID, I will access here this underscore underscore node, so underscore underscore node, and I will append child of the node there. All right, and I will just simply copy this code because I would like to execute it into browser, so I'll copy it. I'll go back to browser. I'll go to the inspect tools again, so right click inspect, let's go to console. Let's paste it here. And you will see as soon as I'll paste it and I will press enter, this JavaScript will be executed and hello world should be added into the HTML document. Now pen child of a null somewhere. Okay, I have introduced here issue. So let's see, let, let's see what's uh, let, let's see what's wrong here. And actually it should be underscore underscore next because we have here the element with the ID of the next. That's a small issue, it's easy to fix. I will just write here underscore underscore next. Ah, a node has already been declared, so okay. I need to completely refresh this page, and uh, now I need to I will need to paste it here and underscore underscore next. Press enter, and you can see here, hello world was added into HTML. Okay, so that's how JavaScript works, and that's why we are loading the JavaScript so we can add additional things, and also the user can interact with the page interactively. Okay, so. Why we need, in the end, Next.js, why we need React, why we need Angular and uh, similar frameworks. Uh, we, can, we can write the applications normally as we were used maybe before to write just a normal JavaScript. But this way, we need to handle much more things and development experience is much... Uh, actually, the development experience is not so... It's, it's not so enjoyable when you're writing just a pure JavaScript, the old-fashioned way. With the frameworks like uh, React or uh, Next.js, it's much easier to write applications. So basically, you're writing nice components. Everything is en encapsulated. React JS or Next.js is handling all of all of these things for you. You don't need to write here app and child. You don't need to manage your data in some any special way as you would need to when you would use just normal JavaScript. All of this is managed by the the framework you are you are using. Okay, but I would like to show you that. On this uh, base level, 
the still the React.js or the Next.js, they are still using this uh, these functions as the append child and get element by ID and so on. They are still used. Oh, I can show you too actually in a JavaScript code that it's sent uh, to our browser. So for example, in the case of these applications, we are getting here, I'll click here on the network, we are getting here main.js, webpack.js webpack and some other JavaScript files. Uh, I think this main.js should contain the React code so I should be able to find here some app append charts because in the main level also React is using this uh, pay, this API of the of the document. So that's the that's what's exposed on the document. So uh, let's search here for append child for sure. We should find here. So you can see here there are some functionalities. We are appending here child of some elements. So for sure on the base level also these are used by by the React and uh, Next.js. All right, so uh, maybe let's go into even more practical examples and let's try to load something into, into the browsers. Okay, so since we are working with the Next.js applications, we will go back to our coding editors and uh, what I would like to do here is actually create a build of our application. So all this JavaScript here, what we are writing here in the pages, folders, and in our uh, in other files, so as the styles, they are bundled up together in uh, in, sep in the, the other files, and also index HTML document is created so it can be sent from the server into your browsers. So how can we bundle this? We can go back to our terminals when our application is uh, running. We, we can shut down our development server, and we can run here npm run build, which will create which will bundle everything out, will compile and will create this production build. There will be also this HTML document that's sent to your browser and also other JavaScript code that's necessary for running your applications. Okay, when the build, build is created, we can go back to our coding editors. We can click here on the next folder. And in the next folder, we should have here static. Okay, let's, let's search here for a pages that are sent to the browser. I will, give me a second, I need to search for it. I think it's in the server folder pages. Here it is. So server pages folder. And here is the our base page index HTML which is sent to the browser. As you can see here currently, just a one line error, all the spaces are removed and uh, so it's not taking that much, that much space. Okay, so when you want to, when you want to format it, I will just copy everything actually. I'll go back to browser here, I'll go to HTML formatter. So if it's still open here, let's find here HTML formatter. I will replace this content we had here before and I will click here format HTML in new window. So we will get here this nicely formatted HTML document. I will copy everything here and I will paste it. I'll go back to browser, I will paste it here in index.html and I will save this. So now I should be able to simulate the the behavior that's happening when we are making a request to some remote servers, such as udemy.com or medium.com or some other website. You can also load your HTML documents into your browsers, so you don't need to send actual requests on the internet, but it can happen locally on your computers. So I should be able to drag this HTML file into the browser and execute it. Okay, so I'll try it out. I'll open here, I'll actually close all these files here, we don't need them. All right, I will open here a new tab here and I will just simply drag this HTML and I will drop it in here. I'll press enter and you can see the exact HTML document, the HTML application is uh, is displayed here. You can see here it's not in the middle as in my previous example, the incrementation and decrementation functionality will not work because probably your JavaScript files are not loaded correctly. So I'll right click here, I will inspect here and I will check here network tab, I will refresh it and you will see indeed all of the JavaScript file and the CSS files are not loaded correctly. So why this is happening when we are loading manually our index HTML into our browsers? You need to remember uh, when you are creating the request on the internet or to your local host, when you're asking your HTML document, this HTML document is, uh, is sent by some server, the server is application. It can be some JavaScript application, like Node.js application, it can be other applications. And this application is handling the request you are making and it's responding with the HTML document. Since it's handled by some application, also 
the other files are sent correctly because this application is also handling how you will accessing the static files that should be loaded additionally. This is not happening when you are just loading a raw HTML file here. All these paths here, all these files are, are basically are wrong because that should be handled by the server. But now we are not running, running any server in the background. We are just loading a raw HTML document. But we can still load them. We just need to change the path of these, uh, of these files. So let's go. I will go back to Coding Gator. I will show you. All these paths here, are, in this case, are wrong. If we would have a server that we, we could specify that uh, where we need to load them, but in this case, we don't have a server. We, we are just, I'm just showing you an example of the raw HTML file. So if I would like to specify them correctly, I just need to provide relative path here from index HTML to this static folder here. You can see the static folder is relatively to the HTML. I need to go just outside of the pages folder, outside of the server folder, and here, here I have a static folder. So basically, I just need to change this path here to dot dot to go outside of the folder, dot dot to go outside of the server folder, and we need to go to static folder, as you can see here. OK, so I will change all of these paths here. So in the coding editor of Visual Studio, I can just click here on the edit up here, replace, and I will replace here. Let me see, I need to replace this stat. No, this is just a, this next folder. So I'll paste it here. And I need to replace it with the dot dot slash dot dot. I will replace all of the occurrences here. So I'll press this, replace all. And now all these paths have, uh, were, was, uh, they were changed. All right, so now I can save this. I'll go back to my browser and I will refresh here everything and you can see now CSS is loaded correctly, JavaScript is loaded correctly and I can increment and decrement here. Everything is working, JavaScript is loaded, HTML document is uh, correctly inserted and also CSS is co co correctly loaded. Okay, let's try one more thing. Let's see, let's say I don't want to load here additionally my page, this index.js page, which should be responsible for JavaScript of this index.html which you are seeing here. So what I will do simply, I will just remove this actual, not actual JavaScript, but it's loaded, That's, this JavaScript is down here. So down here you have also links, these scripts here, that loading these JavaScript files. And I will search here for index.js, which is, should be JavaScript of my index page. Okay, I'll show you index .js. Here it is. I will simply remove it. I will remove this script here. So this is a starting script. Here is and okay here this script here. In oops, it's very hard to navigate here. So I'll search here for index.js. Or actually, I need to do, do it manually because it has some different name here. So I will go again. I will search here for index.js. Okay, one more time. Now hopefully it will work to remove it. Okay, here so. Here, this stack here, starting here. I will select everything here related to index.js, this entire script. So it will be not loaded into the browser. This script here. I will simply manually remove it from here. I will save this file. I will go back to browser. I will refresh this and I will click here plus and minus and it will not work because simply the JavaScript is not included into in index HTML file. So when index HTML file is loaded, there is no JavaScript uh, executed, which should be handling this plus button and minus button and should increment the numbers. But we can load it manually as well. I could just, just to prove my point here, I could go back here and I can you could find here this in a static folder, my JavaScript file, it should be in a static chunks pages and it should be this index.js. I, I think that this index.js here. Okay, I'll copy everything from this file. I'll go back to browser and I will simply manually insert it here. I will right, I will right click here, inspect, I will go to console. I'll paste here everything, I'll press enter. And now we can see, I'll click here plus, minus, JavaScript is loaded and is handling the interaction on my page. So guys, that should be it from this lecture, just to so summarize things. Anytime you are interacting with the pages, you, you are providing some URL into your browser. Behind the scenes, as you could see, the network tab is making request. The request is going to this remote server, which is the other application, handling it and responding accordingly. In the case of a web page, usually when you are going to this uh, URL, it's sending you back HTML document, which is a 
parsed down by the browser and rendered out as this representation of this HTML document. Additionally, when you are making the request in HTML documents, you need to also load the other files. Now, this doesn't work because I am not running my server, so this is loading additional files which are included in this HTML document. For example, uh, some images, CSS files, or JavaScript files. They are loaded additionally into the browser and they are executed. All right, so making requests, responding with the HTML document. You have multiple types of web pages. You have web pages that are client side rendered and web pages that are server side rendered. In this case, there is the client side rendered, getting empty HTML document, JavaScript files are loaded, and JavaScript files are responsible for rendering content out. In the case of a Next.js, which I cannot I'll show you because, okay, here is the Next.js. In the case of the Next.js, you're getting back HTML document, which is already pre-rendered with the data. Also, additional JavaScript files are loaded uh, to the browser because the JavaScript files are responsible for user interactions, for example, as incrementing and decrementing, uh, decrementing numbers. Okay, so we have a server-side rendered application, client-side rendered applications. Also, another thing I was showing you that we are using these frameworks such as React, uh, Angular, Vue.js, Next.js to help us to create a web applications easier. We don't need to handle all of this basic stuff we would have to do in a JavaScript, so we would have to manage all of this state, all of the data. We would have to use the base JavaScript functions to append the childs, to append the content into HTML document. All of this is already handled by these frameworks. All of the data management, state management is also handled by these, these uh, JavaScript frameworks. All right, guys, so that should be it from this lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Q&A section. And that should be it, guys. So I hope to see you in the next lecture. Cheers.